Well, hello and welcome to Months and Made This. That's about really cheesy. Uh, hey, just here. Uh, anyways, welcome to Months and Made This. My name is Michael and I cook vegan food. So if you're interested in cooking vegan food or learning vegan recipes, then definitely click the subscribe button below and give this video a thumbs up while you are down there. Today, I'm making a pretty much seasonally inappropriate dish. I'm making a soup um, and I'm using squash to make said soup. Uh, but I wanted to make this video before things get too hot, even though it's probably gonna be 100 degrees outside today. But I wanted to make this video because um, you can actually use your barbecue or outdoor smoker or outdoor grill to make the squash for this. So you don't even need to turn on your oven. Uh, and even though it might be a little bit warm in some places to be making soup today, it's still a really comforting, delicious dish. So today I'm making a smoky kabocha squash and chickpea soup. And one of the main flavor components in it is going to be this green curry paste. And uh, one of my favorite recipes on my channel, which is called, I think my favorite pasta ever, uses this green curry paste. So you can go ahead and make that recipe. And then with the leftover curry paste, you can go ahead and make this. Uh, I'm also using this as an opportunity to use up some other things that I have on hand as well. Of course, the full recipe is gonna be on MunsonMadeThis.com and I'll also have that link uh, below. So I've got a big pot pretty large pot here that is already heating up to medium heat. To that, I'm going to be adding some sesame oil, and then I'm gonna be adding some chili crisp. And the chili crisp is kind of a chili oil that has some crispy chili bits still in it. I really like this, great flavor, great heat. Uh, if you don't really like heat, then you might want to leave this out. Today, I'm actually gonna be making a half batch of this because I used the other half of my squash to test this recipe out again for the second time the other day. So uh, what you'll see on the website is actually twice as much as this, but you could make half a batch if you wanted to. So I've got chili crisp and uh, sesame oil heating up in this pan. I have a carrot that I grated. That's going in there. I have an onion. This is a sweet onion and I'm just chopping this up. Now I've always chopped my onions this way, cutting them in half and then slicing them, I don't know which direction, slicing them that way and then just going straight in like this to cut them into little pieces. And uh, a lot of people that are real chefy go ahead and slice it this direction and I feel that seems really dangerous. And I kind of got into a Rachel Ray 30 minute meal rabbit hole a while ago and she always rails against people that insist on cutting the onion this way uh, in addition to the other two ways that I'm showing because she thinks it's just a waste of time. And it was kind of validating hearing Rachel Ray rant against something that I've never really understood myself. So I have my onion here going into the pan. Already smells amazing. I love the smell of sesame oil. I love the smell of that chili crisp. And this is just gonna go in to this pot. And I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I want things to break down a little bit. I want them to maybe get a little bit brown coated in that oil. All right, so that can hang out. Now, the squash. So this is a kabocha squash. I cut it into little pieces. Um, and the squash was about a whole pound. So I've got a half, it's, it was a little bit more than a pound, but once you get all the seeds out and it trimmed up, it's about a pound of squash meat. So I have that half pound here and I grilled it on my barbecue, put it on uh, about 425 degrees and just moved it around so I got some nice charred bits on there and uh, ended up having to turn off half the grill so that um, it still cooked with the residual heat but didn't get too burnt. But you want a nice char, you want a little bit of a smokiness. Oh, forgot the water. So once you have your grilled squash, that goes into a blender and we need water. I'm gonna use about a cup and a half here and the goal is to make a really nice puree with the squash. And this will become a major base for the soup. If you wanted to leave it a little bit chunkier, you could if you wanted some squash bits, but I want mine pretty creamy. So I'm gonna turn this on. It does have a tendency to uh, get a little bit of an air bubble in there. Okay. Oh, 
If it's too thick, definitely add more water. It's that sesame oil. Okay. This is blended. This is browning up nicely or sweating out, I guess, softening a little bit. Now, as I said, I'm gonna be using this to kind of use up a few of the uh, veggies I have on hand. So if you watched my roasted pepper, roasted veggie sandwich video, um, this is the leftover from that video. So I'm just gonna roughly chop these up and these are just gonna get thrown in there at the end. Uh, additionally, in terms of veggies, I have some frozen corn and some frozen peas. Are you gonna eat this soup, Ben? I don't know, maybe. So this soup, I've sat on it for quite a while. Sounds weird, but uh, I've had this recipe, yeah. sat on soup. I've had this recipe kind of in my mind, uh, ready to be made on this channel for quite some time. And I never did it because I originally did it with a smoker. I, my grandfather moved and I inherited a smoker from him. So I was playing with a smoker. I smoked a squash in there. It was incredible. So I made this soup with smoked squash and I'm like, oh my God, this is like the best soup ever. Um, ben, who doesn't really like soup, even liked this. So, um, so hold on. Yeah, go ahead. As, as good as the soup was, our house just smelled like smoke for like two weeks straight. Like he yeah. just bombed the entire house out. So that was that was the one bad thing about it. Yeah, I think I had the smoker a little bit too close to the, the soup was amazing. The house. So if you're making that again, I'll probably say that. That's exactly what I'm making. But I'm not using the smoker, I just use the grill as I explained. And that way you get a little bit of the charred bits, but most people don't have bye. Most people don't have a smoker, but if you do, definitely use it. Alright, so my uh, Onions and carrots are in a good place. Now I'm going to add. Can I mention this? I can. This is <laughs> a, a gift that we got from some of our good friends the other day. We had a, a dog pass away, what, it's like two and a half months ago yeah. now? Yeah, right before quarantine. And uh, they just got us this and it's incredible. Yeah. I love having it. It's like he's back in the house. Yeah, so thank you Steph and Josie for that amazing gift. So generous and thoughtful. And we think we might even try to get another one commissioned by the same artist. Yeah, a Bodhi. Yeah. Put them together somewhere. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so onions and uh, carrots are sweated down a bit. Now I'm going to be adding my green curry paste. This is probably the main flavor component of this soup. This can, uh, usually for like the full batch, you want half the can, so I'm using about a quarter of this can, and I just cover it up and keep it in the fridge. It lasts for quite a while. So I wanna get the, as soon as that curry hits the pan, it's so good. So you wanna get that kinda, I don't wanna use the word browned up, but you definitely want that curry paste to get some heat. It releases a lot of the fragrance, just opens up the spices. And you wanna let this go for about a minute or so. All right, so veggies are chopped here. These are gonna go in at the very end. That is the frozen veggies. I have a half of a lemon that's gonna be squeezed on at the end as well. I'm gonna be adding in the chickpeas. This is a half can. And then I have coconut milk. This is gonna go in just a bit. One thing I am gonna do just for decorative purposes is I'm gonna reserve just a little bit of the coconut milk because I wanna be able to do a little drizzle at the end. The soup isn't the most beautiful color if you can see because of the skins from the squash. So I like to add a little bit of pops of color and the, uh, the coconut milk added at the end is just a nice addition. Okay, so this is ready to receive the liquid. Be careful, it might splatter a little bit. All the squash puree goes in. And it's quite thick. I'm gonna add a bit more water in here just to get things moving. Again, I can't tell you just how incredible everything smells. The onions, 
the carrots, the sesame oil, the chili crisp, now the green curry paste. Mm. All right, so there goes squash. So I usually use a, a Nutribullet for all my blending purposes. I needed a larger blender today for this. But um, I use a lot, <laughs> I use my Nutribullet quite a bit. And what I tend to do is put hot stuff in there. And what ends up happening is it builds up a lot of steam and it actually like busted out the, it didn't make a big mess or explosion or anything, but it definitely busted out the, I don't know where the blades are. It, it hurt something. There's a crack in there. And so now it leaks. So um, I have to order my third blade off Amazon. It's an amazing blender, but I guess I need to treat it better. So uh, this is pretty hot here, but I'll try to show you a little bit. It's a really thick sludge. That doesn't help at all, does it? Uh, it's a really thick sludge. We're gonna thin it out now with the coconut milk. The original recipe calls for one can. And I'm gonna add a little bit more water too, actually. So of course we just have a half can here for a half recipe. And like I'm doing, kind of adjust with more water if it looks like things need to be loosened up a bit. So coconut milk goes in here. So I splatter everywhere. What do you think of these utensils? I was watching, again, back to Rachel Ray. I was watching Rachel Ray's quarantine cook from home and she had similar cooking utensils and I was kind of like, ooh, I want something like that. So I Googled things online and found these and got like a set of four different sizes. Kind of obsessed with them right now. All right, coconut milk, pureed squash. I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid smoke just to enhance the smokiness. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of sugar just to bring up some sweetness. That really helps with the green curry flavor as well as the coconut. Uh, strange ingredient here, peanut butter. This just adds a nice depth. Hopefully I don't lose my spoon in there. Adds a nice depth, also helps with some creaminess, a little bit of fattiness. Not that you don't necessarily have all that with the coconut milk, but it's a good addition. Peanut butter in there. I know it seems like a lot of ingredients, but hopefully most of them are pantry staples, things that you have on hand. All right. If you didn't want to use this vegan bouillon, I love this better than bouillon, no chicken flavor. Um, you could just use veggie broth throughout. If you're one of those salt-free, oil-free, sugar-free individuals, then definitely use your own veggie broth or just water. Um, cut out all the oils. I think the dish would still be okay. So I'm gonna add pretty generous amount of this better than bouillon, no chicken. Use whatever vegan bouillon you like. They also have a roasted garlic one that is insane. That goes in there. And that just essentially makes it like we cooked with broth this whole time. Okay, now we can start adding these other items. Chickpeas are gonna go in. And I'm gonna wait just until this kind of comes up to a little bit of a simmer to add the other veggies. I don't want these to cook anymore, so I want these to just go in at the very end. Same with frozen veggies. Essentially, if they're frozen, they're kind of cryo-cooked already. That's not the right word, is it? Cryo-blanched. So you just want these to be warmed through at the end so they don't overcook. And looking around at everything, that's pretty much it. There is one last thing that I want to do. Um, the coconut milk is gonna go on top for decoration. Uh, I'm also going to put some green onion. If you watched my last few videos, you'll see that I'm pretty much putting green onion and cilantro on everything. And I'm okay with that. Just thinly slicing the green onion. I've also been reserving the whites and putting them in a little jar on the counter and it regrows the greens. It's kind of crazy. So I might use a little bit of the white here, but it's mostly just the green. Fresh cilantro. I also mentioned this in my last couple of videos, but just keeping cilantro and green onions in a cup in the fridge 
I use the plastic bag to kind of make a little greenhouse in there. So chop. Cilantro. Got a little bit of a peanut butter spill over there. Roughly chop this. You know what might be good too, which I'm just thinking about, uh, is adding some peanuts on the top for a little bit of crunch, since we did add peanut butter inside. Uh, we're almost there. It's just about to a simmer. Let's grab some peanuts. Be careful with your uh, dry roasted peanuts. I've mentioned this before, but the uh, Planters brand does have gelatin in it for some weird reason. So I usually look for the store brands. Just roughly chopping these. Hey, Ben. Ben, are you around? I forgot to get a bowl to plate or to bowl. All right, so we're about at a simmer here. Let's add those veggies. That's gonna make this so good. Add the frozen veg. If you had like a cooked potato, this would be really good with like cooked sweet potato in it also. Again, if you wanted to add more of the squash and leave that a little bit chunkier. Just want this to warm through. Now is also a good time for me to taste for seasoning. It does need a little bit of salt for my taste. Hey Ben, can you do me a favor? Uh, find me a bowl, I think there's one on my desk. Find me a bowl to bowl this in. Pretty decorative bowl. You just use this one, but I like it. Okay. We'll use this one. And uh, I'm not sure how much time has actually elapsed, but the soup is done. So a couple things also, I'm really gonna gild the lily here by putting a bunch of stuff on top. Oh, I forgot the lemon. All right, that. This just brightens it up. If you had a lime, that would really work as well. Hardly there was no seeds in there. Okay. Turn this off. Stir the lemon juice in. Let's talk toppings. I have the bowl that the soup is going to go in. I have green onion. I have cilantro. I have chopped peanuts. I have some sesame seeds. I have some coconut milk. And this is something that I've been really interested in. If you watched my, I keep referencing every video. If you watched my last video, the ramen video, or I guess that maybe two videos ago, um, I talk about this Chongqing powder. It's a Sichuan chili powder mixture. Um, this comes from the Mission Chinese Food Cookbook. I'll have a link to a recipe for this um, on my website as well, where this whole recipe will be. Balsamic vinegar is another thing to go on top. Is that too much stuff to go on top? I think I'll be okay. So let's dish it up. Other than the grill cooking or outdoor cooking or baking of the squash, you can see it comes together really quickly. I actually really love the extra grilled veggies. So when you go out there to grill your squash. Go ahead and throw some zucchini on there as well. Uh, all right, let's start with balsamic drizzle. And I don't know where I found this. It's called balsamic glaze. It's a reduced balsamic vinegar. A little drizzle over the top. And I started keeping spoons next to my stove and I have to say, it's one of the greatest things I've ever done for myself. Drizzle. A 
coconut milk, some peanuts. So ready for this. Fresh cilantro. Green onion. If you watch my channel, you see that my flavor profiles are pretty much all like this. This looks like the last few videos that I made. And just some sesame seeds because why not? So here you have a smoky roasted kabocha squash with, uh, let's start over again, a smoky squash and chickpea soup. Smells incredible. I'm going to attempt to give you a taste of this and then uh, I'll show you some glamour shots. I'll take the camera down as soon as I'm done chatting here and um, give you some beauty shots of this soup. It is spectacular. It's sweet, it's spicy, the little acidity from the balsamic and the lemon juice. Veggies add a nice, nice texture, great smokiness, earthiness, and you have the vibrant green on the top that just helps light everything up. I did mention I was gonna put this on here. Um, I'll wait and do that a little bit later when I devour the bowl, which will happen on Munson Ate This, which is uh, my Patreon eating show channel. So if you go below patreon.com slash Munson Made This, um, if you support the channel on Patreon, then you will be able to watch all these months and eight this videos. We're close to about 40 videos on there now. So it's a whole other channel you're missing out on. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these kind of more casual videos like this, definitely give this a thumbs up and comment below that you like these more casual videos. Uh, if you have any suggestions or ideas of other things that I should do coming for as you know, things get warmer, recipe ideas or dishes that you want to see me make or veganize, definitely comment those below as well. So thank you again. See you next time with another recipe video. Bye.